More information, please. More information about business bad debts, see section 166 and uh, its regulation, non-business bad debt. All other bad debts are non-business bad debts and are uh, debts and are deductible as short-term capital losses on form 8949 and uh, schedule D. So if it's not business related, then you're going to have to go to the personal side of things and see whether or not you can deduct it on a personal th side of thing, which is kind of like out of the scope of basically our concept here, because our major thought process is those that are business related. From our standpoint here, our major obstacle is to make sure that we can separate what is a business versus personal, which can be a little bit confusing uh, sometimes, but usually it's fairly clear with the bad debt, the people that owe us money. So for more information on non-business bad debts, you can see section 166 and its regulations. Now, the one thing we talked about an accrual method here, and we talked about a cash-based method, but also just wanna point out that if you do accounting like courses, or if you deal with like some, some companies, might use an allowance method, which is a method to try to try to uh, estimate the amount of bad debts that are are not going to be collectible, and so so that's not always going to be the case for small businesses. But again, if you have that kind of method, then you want to make sure that you're writing off bad debts in compliance. Uh, with the tax code, because again, you would think that the IRS would be somewhat skeptical of estimations if they're estimates for taxes, because then people could try to use estimations to basically over over write off or use timing adjustments of uh, the bad debt. The basic methods that we've used here or thought about is basically a cash method system where you you would never have recorded the income and therefore you wouldn't have a deduction for bad debts and an accrual system, which would be what we would call a direct write-off method where you're recording revenue, but you're not trying to estimate like how much of the revenue is not gonna be collectible, uh, uh, but instead just trying to determine at some future point when a certain bad debt is not collectible and then write it off at that point in time. Whereas you can imagine the allowance method would basically say, hey, I might have some types of businesses where I have a lot of bad debt because I, I make a lot of sales. And, and in that type of industry, there's a certain amount of those sales that aren't gonna be collectible. And I can basically estimate the amount of bad debt and therefore for reporting purposes to external uh, users, it would be useful to account for the bad debt so that I don't overstate my accounts receivable and my sales numbers when I know that there should be some part of that bad debt that is not going to be collectible, but I don't know exactly which part of that debt is not going to be collectible. So that, again, makes sense from a generally accepted accounting principle, but it's more complicated. So a lot of small businesses don't do it. And you can see why the IRS is going to be skeptical of methods like that, because it leads more towards estimates. So, so you would think that uh, you want to be in, if that comes up, you want to be in compliance with the tax code on that type of thing.